Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to learn how to solve Sudoku problems using OpenCV. And we'll go step by step. As you can see here, we have the pre-processing of the image, the finding contours, finding the Sudoku, and we will classify each of the digits, and then we will find the solution and overlay it back to our original image. So all of this we will do step by step, so stay tuned and do check out my new channel which is all about web development. So if you are interested in learning web development and how you can create different projects using web, then do subscribe to that channel and for now, let's get started with Sudoku. So let's get started. The first thing is that we are here in PyCharm and what we have is three different files. So here we have Sudoku main, then we have utilities, and then we have Sudoku solver. Now the thing is all of the OpenCV part is basically the image processing part is in between Sudoku main and then utilities. So all the main aspects, the bigger picture is in this file and then we have the relative functions in our utilities. And the third one, which is the Sudoku solver, will contain the mathematical aspect when we have the actual digits. So once we know what is our board and what are the values present in each of the boxes, then we can use the Sudoku solver to actually find out the final result and plot it back. So before we actually start, I have created this file which shows that we have six, uh, six steps. Now I have been trying this new method of creating these images where I label all of the steps and um, I show basically an overview of the whole project. So if you like this method, do leave a comment below so I keep making images like this. So the idea here is that we have number one as our pre-processing of the image so here we will convert it into grayscale we will apply some thresholding maybe some blur as well and then we have step two where we will find the contours so the contours when we once we have it then we will move on to finding the actual sudoku now here we will also apply word perspective now in this image it's not necessary because it is basically a bird eye view. It's uh, it's taken from the top, but in a lot of cases, the image is not exactly uh, fr taken from the top. So it might have a tilt or a curve. So what we have to do is we have to apply word perspective so we get a perfect uh, square. So once we have that, we are going to classify each of these digits. So this is the result of the classification. So here you can see we have two and we are getting two. Then we have one, we are getting one. And the empty spaces, we are getting the empty spaces. So we need to know all of this. Now, even a single mistake here will change the answer completely. Or um, in the worst case, we will not have any answer at all. So uh, it's very important that we have this done right. Then we will go to finding the solution. So as you can see here, all of the remaining gaps will be filled with some numbers. So here you have five, four, then you have here eight, three and seven and so on. And at the end of the day, we will just overlay our solution to our original image. So these are the main steps. And I'm going to label all of these um, in the actual code as well so you can follow along easily okay so here I'm also trying something new what I've done is I've written the code but I have commented each of uh, the steps so what I will do is I will explain step by step what is happening and I will uncomment and show you the result as well so before we begin we have to import and what we need is the let's go to settings and let's go to the interpreter and here what we need is basically OpenCV so where is it OpenCV this is the version you can see here and then we need NumPy 
this is the numpy and this is the version that we have now it has a, uh, a later version as well but i think because of tensorflow it is using this one uh, and then we have the tensorflow we are using 2.3.1 so you can use a later version of tensorflow or opencv as well but if it doesn't work i will recommend you to come back to these exact uh, versions okay and uh, by the way my python is basically version number 3.7.6 so if your python version is a bit different and it's not working properly then you might want to uh, try out 3.7.6 okay now we are going to look at our first step which is basically preparing the image so here first of all we have our image itself which is in the resources folder as you can see here resources and it's by the name one.jpg so if i open up resources and this is the file so you can see this image uh, we have for the sudoku now we will have a height and a width as well which we will set and this has to be a square because uh, at the end of the day when we are using the the puzzle itself it has to be of the same height as its width okay so then we have uh, the first thing we have is preparing the image so we are simply reading our image with the specified path which is over here and then we are resizing our image with the width and the height and we are also creating a blank image i will tell you why we are doing this and then we will do our thresholding so this was our first step so in the pre-processing we will uh, create a new function called preprocess and we will send in the image now this pre-processing function is basically in utilities and if i go up here it says here pre-processing image so here first of all we will convert it into grayscale and then we will add a little bit of blur the gaussian blur and then we will apply thresholding so we are using adaptive threshold now if you are wondering about all these parameters what you can do is you can uh, press the control button and by the way it's already showing you if you hover over it but if you don't get this you can click on the control button and then you can click on your mouse so that will take you to that function and here you will see the parameters the definition of each of these parameters okay so coming back it will return us this image threshold so let's go back and this is our image threshold so what we are doing is we are displaying it using the image uh, image stack function that i created i don't know a long time ago so that function is basically here in the utilities if I scroll down all the way this is the stack images function so all you have to do is you have to send in all the images you want to stack together and then you have to give in a scale how uh, you want to increase the size or do you want to decrease the size and all of the rest will be done by the function itself and it will return us one image that we can plot using IM show so this is what we are doing here so this is basically the array of images and this is basically when we are calling the function stack images this is the images array and then we are putting the scale as one so we need the exact uh, size now as i mentioned before we have a blank image now this blank image is there because we are testing right now so whenever we uh, finish one step we will replace this blank image with that step so we know what is our output for example in this case we have our image as the first image and then the next one will be image threshold which is our step number one so before we actually run that let's just run this with the blank images and see what is our output so there we have it so this is our image uh, sudoku and then we have all these uh, images that we will fill up later on if you don't want to create a blank image the other thing you can do uh, let me just copy this the other thing you can do is you can simply just paste image the same image again and let me remove that and you can run it like this so in that case you will get an output like this 
but I prefer uh, adding the blank image. That's why I have created that. Okay, so let me bring that back and we can remove this. Okay, so now, as I've mentioned before, after doing the uh, step, we are going to uh, display that image. So we will copy image threshold and we will display it here. Okay, so here is the result of our threshold. Now, if you're not happy with the result, you can always go back. You can add a little bit of dilation, a little bit of erosion. You can add blur, you can remove blur, or you can make the adaptive threshold a little bit, um, what he called, more aggressive. So it is up to you how you want to change these parameters. But for now, I think it is more than enough. So let's close that and we will go back to our step number two. Now, the step number two is basically finding all the contours. So first of all, let me just uncomment this. Uh, the first thing is our images that we will be using for display. So all we have to do is we will copy these images from the actual image. So this is our actual image that we imported. So we are making a copy of that in images contours and image big contour. So images contour will contain all the image, uh, all the contours and image big contour will contain the biggest contour so that will be uh, good to see because we want to make sure that we have uh, found out the correct sudoku problem then we have the find contours function which is basically allowing us to find all the contours uh, what we have to do is we have to send in our image in which we want to find it and then we have to define a method we are using the external method because we want the outer contours and then we have to define the chain approximation so here we are using chain uh, the simple chain approximation okay so once we have that we will have all the contours saved in this uh, contours variable and they also have a draw contours function which basically is there to draw all the contours we don't have to worry about that so we are using uh, this image, images contour here, and we want to draw all of the contours that we have found, and that will give us the result. So we can copy this, and we can go down, and we can paste it here. And there we go. So now you can see that we have all the contours. Now, if we were using a different method, it will uh, look for the contours inside as well, but right now we are using the external method that's why it is giving us all this clean region okay so that is good now we can move on to step number three in step number three we have to find the biggest contour so let's uncomment this so this is the function called biggest contour so once you send it in it will magically find the biggest uh, contour for us. <laughs> Actually not, we do have to define this function. So it is not something that comes with OpenCV. So we have to write it down. So in biggest contour, what we have is that, first of all, we are sending in all the contours. Whatever we found, we will send it here. And then what we will do is we will loop through all of these contours one by one. And we will check the area of each of these contours because we don't want it to be very small because very small means it's noise. So we will check whether the area is above 50. And if that is true, we will find its parameter and then we will find its uh, corners. How many corners does it have? So uh, it will approximate the poly count and then we will uh, check whether it is above the maximum area. This is the maximum area currently, which is zero. So it will be true. And then it will check if the length of approximation is four. Now this means that it is a rectangle or a square. So we are only finding shapes that are rectangle or square. So if that is the case, it will make the biggest contour. It will change it to approx and then it will make the maximum area the current area. So basically it will keep looping and every time it finds something bigger, it will replace the values uh, with the current values. So at the end of the day, these are the two values that we uh, initialized. And at the end of the day, we are going to return these two values. 
so biggest will contain all the points uh, all the corner points and the ma uh, max area will contain the maximum area of this biggest contour so once we return that we can come back here so this is our maximum area and this is the biggest contour this will be the four points so let me just print it out so you can see what is that so it's not confusing let's print that out and there you go so here you can see that we have these four points so these are of the biggest contour okay now that is good but as i mentioned before um, sometimes what happens is we don't know which point we got maybe we got this as the first point and this as the second then this as the third and this as the fourth but when we do it next time or for another image we might get this as one this as two this as three this as four so we don't know which arrangements our uh, what do you call points are in so which arrangement these points are in so we need to know this arrangement because we are going to use word perspective and for that it has to be in this order so it has to be zero zero then width zero then zero height then width and height so uh, zero zero is this point then this is width and zero this is height and zero and this is width and height so we have to make sure that our sequence of the points is exactly the same otherwise it will not work properly so in order to make sure of that we have this function called reorder so if we go and have a look in the utilities so where is it it's here okay so what it will do is it will add these up so it will add these points and the lowest value will be our zero zero it will be our origin and then it will add them up again and the biggest value will be our width and height then it will take the difference of it and then the positive value will be one of the sides and the negative value will be the other side so so one of the sides will be positive maybe this one and the the other side maybe negative will be this one so this way we can determine uh, the order of our points okay so then once we have ordered these points then we will go back and then we will put it for word perspective now here you can see that we are preparing these points so this is these are the biggest points so we will send it here um, actually let me show you what it does so let me print it out and see if it has done any changes so let's print that again so yeah so here you can see this is 101 and 164 this is the same then you can see the second one is 102 here but the second one here is 396 and then we have uh, 396 417 here we have 102 418 and here we have 396 164 here we have 396 414 so as you can see it has arranged these points into this sequence okay and so this sequence is basically this here so we have our points one which is uh, these points so we have all of them ready and then these will be our points two and then we can send it for word perspective so before we do that we need the transformation matrix and we will get it by get perspective transform and once we have that we can use the word perspective function we will send in our image the main image and we will send in our matrix and we will define the width and the height which is 450 and 450 so once that is done we can have a look at this but before we do that we might want to look at the actual corner points so we have got these points these are the biggest points but are they of the actual sudoku or not so we need to check that so we can do that by drawing it so here we are using the exact same function which we used here draw contours so we are using here again draw contours and what we are doing is we are sending in the biggest values so this will just draw it and in this case this is b g so it will draw it in green color so if we run this now 
uh, okay I didn't add that so we need to display big contours so let's go down and over here we can write image big contour so let's run that and there we have it so here you can see we are it's actually a little bit small um, let's increase the size let's make this 25 and let's make this red BGR so this will be our R and there you go so now it's clearly visible so now we we have confirmed that we have uh, found out the correct Sudoku uh, what you called square so that we can proceed on to the next step okay um, actually let's see the word perspective as well so we can use this image verbed color so let me copy that and what is happening here uh, bgr to gray so we are changing it to grayscale before we do that let me remove this so because i want to see it in colored and then we can change it again to grayscale okay so let's run that <laughs> and there you go so now we are getting the actual Sudoku. So we have the grid laid out exactly 440 by 440 and we have nine boxes uh, in the width and nine boxes in the height. So we are almost there in terms of the image processing. Now we have to define each of these digits. So let's close this and let's go back. So how many steps did we do? We did three steps okay that's good so now we will move on to step number four now step number four is basically splitting the image so right now we are getting all of this as one grid so this is all of this is just one image right but what we want to do is we want to get each of these boxes as a single image so that we can run a predictor on it so uh, this predictor i have done in one of the previous videos in which i showed how you can create a model to find out uh, digits from zero to nine so i will put the link to that in the description and in the course so that you can follow that video if you want to train it yourself now again i have used a limited number of images if you want to improve the accuracy you can always go and train again and increase the accuracy as well so in this case i am using a model you can see here it's called my model dot h5 this model is uh, from the same what you call uh, video or the tutorial that we did so i'm using the same one over here so we are going to send in all of these images so we will have nine by nine which will be 81 images we will send each of these images one by one and it will predict what uh, digit does it contain is it two is it one or is it blank so we don't have zero but we have blank so we need to make sure we get the blank value as well okay so here that's why we have to split and we have to predict so first of all here you can see that we are splitting so we will create uh, this again this is just for display we are uh, creating a blank image and then we are creating our boxes so here we have a function called split boxes and we are sending in our image warp uh, now it is it has been converted into grayscale so it will be easier because we will be using it for uh, classification so it will be easier if it's grayscale so here we will send this image and let me comment this part because Will give an error so if we go to the split boxes function here what it does is it uses the numpy now image is basically an array of pixels an array of numbers so we can use numpy to actually uh, play around with these images so what we can do is we can use a vertical split and we can use horizontal split to split the images uh, into 81 different images so this is what we are doing we are looping through uh, we have two different loops and with each loop we are cutting the images and then we are appending it to boxes so if i go back here and if i write here print 
length of boxes that should give me 81 and there you go so it is giving me 81 because it has 81 individual uh, images so if we wanted to try it out what we can do is we can write here cv2 dot im show and then we can write here sample and here we can write for example boxes at one so let's run that uh, did it show up yes so you can see here uh, it's hard to drag if it's very small yeah so here you can see that this is the image one so um, I asked for zero and then one so this is the one value that we are getting so this is image number one well it has the number one as well but uh, I think you get the point so this is what we are getting so if I were to change any value here let's say 33 it will give me the value so here probably 33 is blank that's why it is giving us this blank so let's try another number let's say 65 yeah 65 is 6 so now we have 81 images and what we can do is we can send each of these images uh, to our model and it will predict whether it is uh, a digit or it is blank so here we are doing this so we have numbers is equals to get prediction and we are sending in the boxes and we are sending in the model but where did this model come from so this model we have to initialize first so here in the parameters we are going to initialize model is equals to initialize prediction model and this is basically a function we have created we will go to utilities and over here you will see this is basically model is equals to load model and we have resources my model dot h5 so basically it's loading this model and once it has loaded it it will return it back that's pretty much it and what else yeah so we need to uncomment this now whenever you are running tensorflow it will take a while to start that's why i commented this out but now every time we run it will take a little bit before it actually starts so if we go back here and if i run this now and uh, by the way these are warnings that i give get every time and these are very annoying so for that reason what i do is i have this line of code here these three lines of code and that will remove all of these uh, warnings and i am using gpu i'm not using cpu in this case so let's run this again so there you go so now it is detecting each of these letters and it is giving a prediction of what it is so if we go to the first one that is 2 which is correct it is 99% sure that it is 2 then we have 1 it is showing us it is 1 then we have 0 it is showing us it is blank that is good and the prob the probability is very low so that is good and here again it's very low and then we have 6 as a 100% probability then we have 0 because the probability is low so what we can do is we can say that if the probability is let's say less than 80% or 70% then it means it is a blank um, image it has no digits inside it so as you can see most of them which are actual numbers they will have a very high percentage so you have 99% you have 100% 96% so you can see that oh, this is how we know if it's blank or if it's a digit but how does this work so if we go here where where is it so here is get prediction so if we go to the utilities and we go down so this is basically our get prediction now whenever we bring in the boxes basically we are bringing in all the 81 images and we are also importing the model that we brought in earlier over here right uh, if you see here we are sending in the boxes and we are sending in the model so once we have that so what is happening is that we are preparing the images so this is basically pre-processing 
uh, and this is done because we did this pre-processing while we were training as well when we were training our images we did all of these steps and now when we are running or testing our images we have to do the same as well so if you want to know more about this go and check out the digit uh, classification video and you will understand it further now this is basically a loop for each uh, image we are doing this so we will do this 81 different times so for each one of them we will do a prediction we will write model dot predicts and we will send in our image now earlier we used to use uh, this method model dot predict classes but they are going to uh, depreciate this so we are not going to use this anymore instead we are going to use uh, the argument max and we will use the predictions for that so uh, this is what they have mentioned in their uh, documentation okay so this will give us the class index why do we need the class index because our uh, classification is done from 0 to 9 so we need to know which class it belongs to if it uh, says that the probability is that it is class number one then it means it is index number one it means it is number one if it says the probability is class index six then it means it is digit number six so that is how we know and this here is our probability value that we are getting from our predictions and what we will do is here we are just printing this out so all of these values that you saw are because we are printing it out here and then we will check as i've mentioned before if the probability value is greater than 80 percent then we are going to append it to the result otherwise we do not need to append it so what we will do is we will create this result and in that result we are going to append it after every prediction so this will return the result over here and if we go back and these are the numbers basically so we can write here print numbers and if we go here and we remove this so let's run this and see what happens so here you can see that we have now the complete list and all of these values are in order so here you can see we have two one zero zero six then zero nine zero zero then zero 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 then nine and then one so you can see all of this happening over here so this is good now we have all the digits classified now what we can do is what is the next step now we have to display i think yeah so we need to display this so let's see how that works so what we are doing is we are displaying numbers let's go to that part here in the utilities so this i have put it in six it should be in four so because we are using it later on as well i have put it in six it is i think both in four and six let me check that here uh in number six we are using where is it yeah we are using it here as well in number five yeah so it is in five and in four so let me write that down here so four and five okay so this is basically to display and what we are doing is we are simply doing a little bit of processing going through a few loops to actually write down each of the values so we are just putting text on the image and we are returning that image that's it and you can define the color what color do you want or uh, um, yeah so pretty much the color you can define and then you have the numbers that you want to display and which image you want to display it on so if we go back here we are displaying it on a blank image so here image detected digits uh, I think we declared it here yeah so this is basically a blank copy so we are detecting it we are putting it on a blank image so let's print that out we'll copy this 
and where is it here so instead of the verb colored we are going to replace this so it will take a while and there you go so now you can see that we have two one zero zero six zero nine zero zero so now it's displaying like an actual sudoku problem so that is good and now we can move on to the next step so next we are going to uncomment this which is basically finding all the positions where the number is greater than zero and then it will put a zero over there otherwise it will put one so let's run this and see what happens and let me print it out first so we will write here numbers oh no it's points all right or yeah it's actually printing numbers already so we can just write that So here you can see that this is our uh, numbers and this is our position array. So here you can see that whenever there is a, a value greater than zero, it will put a zero. And whenever there is a zero value, it will put over there one. Now, basically what this means is that we are putting the value of one wherever we want to uh, fill up the value. So whatever values are missing, which are basically zeros, here we are just mentioning that these are the places we need to fill it up so these are basically like placeholders so we we need this because we want to display now if you don't want to display it on the final image if you just want to print out the result then it is not required but in our case it is required because we want to display it back on the original image so here we have now the step number five and in step number five, we are going to find the solution of the board. Now, this part is basically mathematical. It's uh, using simply Python. We are finding out uh, the actual uh, result of the board. And what is happening at the back end? Let's have a look. So here we have the Sudoku solver. So if we go here, this is basically the solution uh, of how you can find the Sudoku uh, solver so this code was written by Tim Ruskika I hope I pronounced it right and you can check the information about uh, the detail about this code uh, on his blog or on his website and the link is over here so he has explained it very well how this works so I'm not going to go ahead and do that so the idea is that uh, he actually uses a board and this is the format of that board so if you input a board like this and send it to the solve function, it will solve it and give you the result back. So if you don't want to go into the detail, this is all you want to know. But I highly recommend you do uh, and you go check out his uh, channel and you check out his blog in which he has explained it very well how this all of this works. So we will go back here and then what we will do uh, in the Sudoku, what we will do is we will create our board. So as I mentioned that the board has to be in this style. So if we look at our board right now, uh, by board I mean the values. So they are uh, basically numbers. So here you can see that it is a single array, which is basically a flat array of all the images. Uh, sorry all the numbers so if you see the input over here it has to be different rows so this is one row this is the second row so it has to have nine different rows so we need to split it so we will use the array split function to split the numbers into nine so let me show that how it looks like so we can use bold and let's run that And there you go so here you can see that this is one row and then this is another row over here then we have another row over here 
so now we have multiple rows that we can use so our formatting is proper so now we can send in our board so what we will do is we will write here sudoku solver because this is the file name and then we will write dot solve so you have to make sure you are importing this so we'll, you will write import sudoku solver uh, and I, I'm not sure if I mentioned this, but you have to write from utilities import everything. Anyways, um, let's go back and where were we? Okay, so we were here and you might ask, why did you write this try and accept? Now, the thing is that sometimes it will not find the solution. So, or sometimes it might give an error. So in that case, you have to just move along. So that is why we have added this try. Okay, and then once we have done that, now we have the solution of the board. So if we write here, print board. So this was before and this is after, after solving. So let's have a look. And there you go. So this is before and this is after. So now you can see that wherever we had zero, now there are values filled up. So you can see here it was zero, now it's eight, zero, now it's seven. So all of these values, they have been filled up. But the thing is that we were using this method or this format to actually draw on our image. And we already have that draw function. So we don't want to create another function in which we have to split it again and use this as the input. So what we will do is we will change this into um, flat again, and then we will send that to our draw function. So here we have the flat list and we will loop it. And once we loop it, we are going to send it to our display numbers function, which we used over here as well. So here is the position array that we created earlier. If you remember over here, so this is the position array. Now we have to multiply it with the actual flat list. Okay, so that will give us the values. So here you can write all the solved numbers so let's print out this so you might be confused to why we are doing this let me show you why so let me write this here and we can print this out there you go so now you can see that we have only the values which are new so whichever was missing is uh, printed over here if i don't do this if i don't do this part then it will show me all of the answers so if i just write here flat list There you go. So now it's showing me everything. It's showing me the actual question and it's showing me the actual answer as well. But this is not very good because it's in the same color and it's a little bit confusing what is happening here. So we want to differentiate between what is the answer and what was the question. So that is why we are multiplying it with the previous array in which we had zero values. So would whichever number was a question, it will multiply it by zero and it will become zero. So it will not display. So this is what is happening here. So I will put this back to solved numbers. So here we have done up till step number five. Let me remove that. And then we will move on to our last step, which is basically creating the final image with different colors. And then we will overlay it to the original image. So uh, let's go here and comment this uncommon this so what we have to do now is we have to unwarp our image because it is already warped so in order to do that we are going to use our uh, same points that we used earlier 
and we will use again uh, the points number one but we will flip the points so instead of um, uh, earlier this was points number one and this was points number two but now we are flipping it so that will create a new matrix which will be the inverse matrix and then we will use the word perspective again with our new matrix which is the inverse matrix and that will give us the image solved digits so uh, sorry we are applying it on the image solved digits and that will give us the final result over here so this will be the inverse so let me show you what that looks like And there you go so basically what is happening is that this right now is ready to be overlaid on this image so if you look at this part this part here is basically the same region where this part is so you can see it's on the bottom uh, left corner of the image so here it's now ready to be overlaid but right now it's overlaid on a black image we have to overlay it on the original image so how can we do that we will go back here this is our image verb uh, where is that yeah so image inverse verb color this was the uh, the image that we just saw and then we will write here inverse perspective and we will use added weight to add our newly created image and the uh, what do you call the original image so if I use this instead image uh, inverse perspective here and if I run this so now you can see that it has overlaid it on the actual image so we are just adding the weights and that is pretty much it and uh, you might have seen that we have these grids now uh, and you might be wondering where did they come from so let me show you here so basically this is the function this is basically draw grid and if I go to utilities uh, where is it yeah this one here so basically it's drawing all these uh, different lines using uh, a for loop and you can specify the color of it over here so these are the colors so it's very simple it's um, it's not it's nothing complicated so when you, once you add that grid it looks nice because uh, let me just remove that and or let me remove it from one of them so you can see the difference there you go so here you can see it's without the grid and here you can see it's with the grid so with the grid it looks much better so that's why we are adding that grid uh, yeah so let me remove that as well so that is pretty much it this is something extra we can remove that and is there anything left yeah so here we can write uh, sudoku not found and this is when we are doing this so if you don't find anything if you don't find the biggest contour then you have to display that uh, no sudoku found and all of this has to be inside the if statement and at the end we have the wait key so that it does not uh, close by itself so this is basically the solution of how you can create um, your Sudoku solver and uh, as you can see these are very simple steps you have prepared the image finding the contour finding the biggest contour and use it as Sudoku and then we will split the image uh, for each digit so that we can use the classification model to classify each of these digits once we have that we will put them in an array and then we will send it to our board using the sudoku solver and uh, hats off to tim who actually uh, wrote this code and helped us in actually creating this project so do check him out uh, on his channel tech with tim 
and then we will move uh, on to our overlay the solution where we are just putting the final result on our original image and then we are displaying it back all with the stacking function so this is it for today's video i hope you have learned something new if you have any questions leave them down in the comments below and i have been trying these different methods uh, this is a new method where i am uh, instead of writing the complete code i am uncommenting all of the code and showing you step by step how it works so let me know which method do you prefer more should i write all of it one by one line by line or should i do this uncommenting or the third method is that i have everything ready and i just explain uh, the overview of how it works uh, those videos are pretty much about 15 to 20 minutes these ones are a little bit longer the one with uh, where i uncomment uh, and the longest one is where i write all the code so do share your opinion on which method do you prefer more and uh, i will try my best to use that further in the next videos so this is it and uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell and hit that like button as well if you found this useful and don't forget to subscribe to my new channel which is all about web development and we will look at how we can use OpenCV with web development as well as we go along so this is it and i will see you in the next one